Subsummary reports are one of the most useful kinds of reports you can create in FileMaker Pro, and yet are one of the least understood features of the program. A subsummary report allows you to group together records in your data that share the same values. You can even add counts or sums to each grouping. As an example, I'm going to use a database that tracks business contacts and the interactions your sales reps have with them. On this contact form layout, we see one contact at a time and all of the interactions that we've had with that contact. This is a portal showing the records found by the relationship from contact to interaction. It uses the primary key for contact ID to match with the foreign key for contact ID here in the interaction table. You can see I'm using the anchor buoy method to organize my relationships graph. We explain this method in our FileMaker Pro Level 4 class that we teach here at Accelerate. The portal allows a user to enter a new interaction record, choosing an interaction type, a sales rep, and the date of the interaction. But now the boss comes in and says, hey, that's great, but I need a report that shows me how many interactions we've had, and I want them broken down by interaction type, and maybe even by sales rep. Here's what that subsummary report would look like. So you've got major categories and minor categories, and subsummary reports allow you to create as many of those groupings or categories as you would like. So let's build this subsummary report. We'll start by going into layout mode. Make a new layout or report. We'll say we want to show records from. Now this is where you can get yourself into trouble. A subsummary report needs to be based on the table that's got the most detailed data in it that you want to show on the report. Since we're trying to list interaction records formed into groupings, we want to base this layout on the interaction table. Now if you are new to the anchor buoy method, you might be wondering why is there another instance of what seems to be the interaction table. Well, you're right, this is an interaction table occurrence, but the anchor buoy method also says that we should base our layouts on only the anchor table occurrences. Again, come and take our uh, FileMaker Level 4 class and I'd love to explain it to you. So we're going to base our layout on the table that's got the more detailed data type in it. In this case, the interaction records are the ones we want to show rows for grouped up by one or more categories. For the layout name, we'll call this one Interaction Detail, and we'll choose the report layout type, including subtotals and grand totals. Next, it asks what fields we want on the report, on the layout. And I'm going to go with Interaction Type ID, and let's do sales rep ID and the date. And then we also would like to see the last name of the contact person who we were interacting with. We've got contact ID, but that's not going to be very user friendly on a report. So let's see if we have a relationship that would let us jump from interaction to the related contact record. We don't, but fortunately, we can go in and create it on the fly. Manage database, relationships, here's our interaction table occurrence that this layout that we're building is based on. So we'll just string a new buoy off of that anchor and we'll make this an occurrence of the contact table. Again, if you're wondering, well, why not just tie it to the uh, the contact occurrence up top, well, that's just not how the anchor buoy strategy for managing your graph works. You want to keep your table occurrence groups separate. We'll bring that alongside and relate from the primary key to the foreign key. An interaction record is marked as belonging to or as being associated with a particular contact and we're going to use that primary key in contact as the unique way to identify which contact. 
I'll start to collapse these up a little bit so they're not taking up as much space. And when we say OK, we now have access to the various contact field names, like first and last. I'll double click on last to bring it over. And there we go. Next. And then it asks what field or fields we would like to create these categorical breakdowns or groupings upon. And I'm going to use the interaction type ID for this first go around here. And that will allow us to create groupings of interaction records based on the interaction type, whether it was a sales call or a follow-up call or a sales meeting and so forth. Next. In order to create those groupings, the records actually have to be sorted. Well, you know that a layout can't sort. Only users can sort and scripts can sort. So this question might be at first a little bit misleading until you know that coming up, one of the other questions that they'll ask us as we move through this wizard is whether we want FileMaker to create a script for us. Knowing that I'm going to say yes to that question, we'll leave this sort order as is and maybe even create a second or add a second field into the sort order to sort by date and then move along. Now it asks if we want a subtotal at the bottom or top of each grouping. And we do. We want to add a subtotal. We have to choose a summary field. If I click Specify, we see that we don't have any summary fields in this interaction table. But the good news is we can make one on the fly. Add. I'll call this one Count of Interactions. And then we want to create a count. Now, you can count just about any field, but you wouldn't want to count a field that could potentially be left blank. And there's one field in this list that's never going to be allowed to be blank, and it's the primary key field, since it's defined to automatically receive an entry every time a new record is created. That's a very safe field to count. It's perfectly reliable. We'll say OK. And that count of interactions field now is available. It's a summary field, and this list is only showing us, or making available to us, summary fields. If you had a summary field already defined in your table, then you could have just used it. When you click Specify, it would have showed up as available in the list. Next, we're going to specify what category or grouping field we want to assign this summary field to. And since we've only got one category field, that's an easy choice. And then we can choose whether we want this to be a leading subsummary or a trailing subsummary or both. And let's say we just want to have this count below each group of records. Clicking the Add Subtotal button finally adds it into the list. You can have more than one summary field in use for each of your categories. Now when we click Next here, the next screen is going to look very similar, but notice specify grand totals, it says, instead of specify subtotals. The good news is we can create a grand total using the same summary field without having to redefine it or make a new summary field. And simply by virtue of putting that summary field in a grand summary part on the layout, it could be a leading grand summary, a trailing grand summary, or both that summary field will know that it's supposed to count up all the records in the found set as opposed to just those in a certain grouping. Add grand total, and it goes in as well. For the theme, I'm going to keep this really plain and use the classic theme, making it very printable. We don't need any header and footer information, so we'll say next. And here's the question I told you about. Do we want FileMaker to create a script? Well, let's say yes. We might as well let it do the work that we would want to do anyway. And do we want to assign this script to the script trigger called OnLayoutEnter associated with this layout? So that whenever a user comes into this new layout that we're creating, this script will automatically trigger, sorting the records in the order they should be in to create those groupings. If the records aren't sorted, the subtotals and summary headings won't appear. And we'll click Finish. So let's look at what FileMaker has done for us. We see our layout, Interaction Detail. 
It doesn't look anything like the goal we were aiming for, as we saw in the finished example over here, but we'll get there. What we do see are groups of records that have like values in the break field that we had specified. That was the KF interaction type ID field, that foreign key field for the type of interaction. We see five records here with a one as the interaction type, preceded by this kind of uh, leading subsummary that has that same ID number in it, and a trailing subsummary down here below. And then we see that same pattern repeated. A group of records with a certain interaction type ID preceded by a subsummary part that labels it and followed by a subsummary part. In each of those trailing subsummaries, we have our summary field that has counted up the number of records in that group. Five records in this first group, four records in the next, and then at the very bottom of the whole report in what's called the trailing grand summary part, we see the grand total. Now just to clarify, the KF interaction type ID field that each interaction record is marked with to specify what kind of interaction it was is driven by this other table, the interaction type table here, where earlier I created four records. Each interaction type record received an ID number. So prospect calls are ID number one. That's what these five interaction records are. They were prospect calls because they're marked with an ID of number one. Interaction type number two are the sales meetings. And you can see these four records here are marked with that ID. Likewise, there's a table for sales reps. Each sales rep gets an ID number. Oscar is one, Robert is two, Julia is three. And in this column here, we see those foreign key ID numbers being used to specify which sales rep made that particular uh, prospect call or sales meeting and so on. FileMaker also created a script for us. It's a very simple little script, three steps that just takes the user into browse mode, takes them to that interaction detail layout, and then sorts by the two fields that we had specified when we were running through our new layout report wizard. First and foremost by the interaction type ID field, that's our break field. And then just as a nice convenience, we also wanted the data sorted by date in an ascending order. I mentioned it before, but it's worth saying again that when you're creating a layout that uses subsummary parts, if the data isn't sorted, the subsummary parts don't work. They don't show up properly. To prove that, I'll click the sort button and unsort the data, and the subsummaries disappear. Now, remember how in this layout, we asked for FileMaker to automatically apply that script that it wrote for us to the script trigger called on layout enter. And it did that. So that every time the users enter this layout, when in browse mode, this interaction detail script will run, which redundantly takes them into browse mode, switches them into this layout, also redundantly, but most importantly, it sorts the data by that KF interaction type ID field and secondarily by the date field. All we need to do to trigger that script is simply get out of this layout and then come back into it. The script trigger on layout enter fires running the script that sorts the data and we see our subsummaries have reappeared because the rows of data are now back in order according to their interaction type ID. To conclude, let's take a look at the different parts involved in a subsummary report. We've got a header part, Subsummary by interaction type ID leading, and likewise, subsummary by interaction type ID trailing. Those are your two subsummary parts. In the leading subsummary part, you're typically going to put your banner or kind of identifying headline. In the trailing subsummary part, you can restate that same banner or headline, and this is oftentimes where you're going to want to put your summary field. And then finally, there's a trailing grand summary part. And that same summary field, that count of interactions field that we created earlier, when living in the trailing grand summary part, works to give you a grand summary for all of the records in the found set, as opposed to just for one grouping, like the subsummary parts give you.